Welcome back to GMSA 9. We are joined now by Courtney Friedman. Hi, Court. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here. Sunday evening, Courtney had a piece sharing the story of a man who came clean about his former abusive behavior in relationships. And that was through a rehabilitation program. He turned his life around and is now inspiring others to do the same. So he hopes that by sharing his story and being so transparent that it will help fix the tragic domestic violence epidemic here in Bear County. And Courtney, we know you've been covering these stories for a while. Um, tell us, we're very interested in how you were able to get this interview. I'm glad you're asking this because, you know, you see a lot of the stories that we do on air, but there's a lot of background. And this one is about five years in the making. So when I started doing this series, I just saw how big this domestic violence issue was and we wanted to dig further in and I got the go ahead. So as you know, I've been doing stories for years. I have talked to experts for years and said, hey, if you ever find someone, a former offender, who's willing to tell their story, I think this is one of the most powerful stories that we can tell um, in the realm of domestic violence. What is their perspective on how to change what's happening? And the chances of finding a person willing to talk on camera is one in probably a billion, right? Yes. I got three, throughout the last five years, three men stepped up mm -hmm. and it could have been a woman too. I mean, this is on uh, both right. genders, but three men stepped up and then backed out last minute, which I understand there's pressure and judgment and shame. So um, that's why I'm so proud of uh, Felix Gonzalez. Yeah, and that is his name. We yeah. want to show you the story and then we're going to talk to Courtney some more. Crazy. Crazy to look back, but to see that, we have to start at the beginning. I grew up as a underprivileged child. At a young age, I had to learn how to survive. Felix Gonzalez stole, fought, even sold drugs, and got arrested for some of it. I started becoming a womanizer. I started feeling empowered. I started feeling like that I own whatever it may be, as if um, I was entitled to it or you owe me. In these pictures, he looks like any harmless guy you'd see at the bar, but on the inside and at home, he was angry. Did you realize at the time that you were an abusive person? Oh, not at all, because I grew up on the east side of San Antonio and I was fighting since kindergarten. Is that the problem? I didn't realize that I was such a controlling person. This abusive, narcissistic, manipulating, mind controlling person that is out of control and you think you're right. Years ago, he got in a fight with his girlfriend and hit her. The cops were called and I had received a ticket. And later on, I went to uh, go get my driver's license renewed and Judge Lacey gave it to me and told me I needed to do 20 weeks of BIP. BIP, or Batterer's Intervention and Prevention Program, is now a 24-week court-ordered program abusers are mandated to take. I think BIP works because it touches on so many different areas, and it is a group setting of men. These guys are over here willing to talk about it, so now I can put my pride down as well. Learning a lifestyle of love. Also realizing that myself, that the physical abuse is usually the ending part of everything. That gaslighting, jealousy, emotional, sexual, or financial manipulation is all abuse. You believe that, oh, well, I was raised this way, so it's the right thing to do. But it really is wrong. You start to see the light from being in the dark for so long. On top of his BIP meetings, Gonzalez started going to church. That is where I broke a lot of those chains that held me in the emotional side. Breaking those chains as early as possible is what he thinks will help prevent the astounding amount of abuse in our community. Bear County's domestic violence numbers per capita are the highest in the state. From someone who has been on the other side of this, what do we need to be doing to stop that? Helping one another, speaking to one another, opening up to one another. He tells his story without shame and without excuses to show that change is hard, but it is possible. There's times that like you want to go back to your ways. There's times where you want to revert back, but you understand now the pain and anger it caused mm -hmm. and you don't want to do that, and, and especially it's tough. Gonzalez now in a healthy and loving relationship that he appreciates every day. I told you, you have gotten the best version of Felix ever in his life, and I'm only getting better. Felix looked at the man in the mirror, did not like what he saw. Let's talk a little bit more about this batterer's intervention and prevention program. The Family Violence Prevention Services CEO, Marta Palaya, said it is not rare for these guys to show up 
court ordered and say, why am I here? My wife, I slapped my wife, so what? She was disrespecting me. Right. Um, and you can find all of her sound bites and clips in our web script. Um, and that's what uh, Mark is reading from. I encourage you to watch, <laughs> look at the fuller story. She is talking exactly what Felix said in that story, that these are learned behaviors. <clears throat> he grew up looking at violence, seeing violence and acting on violence, not really thinking that it was abuse. So these are behaviors that need to be unlearned. When this is what you surround yourself with, this is what you believe love looks like. And so that's what I've learned a lot in these stories is redefining what love is and what a healthy relationship is in general. And I know you were saying earlier, we had that conversation that it was difficult to get an interview because of, uh, you know, afraid of the feedback. Right. Speaking of that, what kind of feedback has Felix gotten so far? Yesterday, uh, Felix and I spoke multiple times. I myself got immediate feedback from a lot of the people in the domestic violence advocacy realm, um, knowing how hard this interview was to get. So proud of Felix. A lot of them know him because he's opened up to them before. But I had a conversation with Felix and he, we were just kind of like crying a little bit together on the phone. Just, he said that he notably got um, an, a message from a woman that he didn't know, um, that found him on social media that said, I was watching this with my husband who is exactly the person that you said you were before you got help. Um, I didn't think there was a way out of this or a way to change. I started sobbing during the story and he came over and gave me a hug and said, we're gonna fix this. Um, they are already wanting to meet up with him to talk about what they can do to better their relationship. I mean, just the fact that people realize change is possible is more powerful than I think that, you know, we can imagine. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. So generally, it would appear that even though this is a tough subject and a tough conversation, that the feedback has been positive and yes. thought-provoking. Overwhelmingly positive. I went into this and I said, listen, I'm in the news. <laughs> I know what online can be um, <laughs> feedback, but you know, you're going into this so transparent. He helped me find his mugshot. I mean, this guy is someone who knows who he is, knows who he's not. And uh, he 100% wanted to be um, forthcoming and knew that if there was negative reaction, there'd be negative reaction. Well, that's about as transparent as it can get, yeah, right? Absolutely. That's yeah, awesome. It is. The 24 week program. Yeah, so it used okay. to be 20 weeks. It's now 24 weeks. There are other programs out there. I know you've probably heard of some of the other ones. Um, this is the one that the um, Justice Department is, it's statutory. So the judges are mandated to mandate it, if that makes sense. Um, so this is, it, it's a long program, and that's because it takes time to unlearn behaviors. You bet. All right. And that program is working. So if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, there, of course, are resources. Mm -hmm. A local number here is 210 733 8810.